Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is another coin change problem and it is a minimum level problem. So this is a very standard DP problem with a very slight variation. So we are going to solve this problem with DP and if you have some problems or ever face any problems in implementing iterative DP and you find recursive DP easier, then watch this video till the end because we are going to solve this problem with iterative DP and I am going to show with you a very uh, like easy way to solve problems with iterative DP. Right. So even like I face this particular problem uh, when I was transitioning from recursive DP to iterative DP but then I formed a method of solving these kind of problems so that it is always easy for me to form the iterative DP method. Right. So let us quickly discuss what this problem says. It says that we have been given three integers n, k and target and uh, like n is the size of the array coins and we have to find whether we can make the target, uh, target is the total value of coins using an infinite supply of each coin but the total number of coins used must be exactly equal to k, right. So you remember that this is exactly equal to k, we have to use exactly k coins, right. So uh, for example, let me just take this particular sample test case, they say they say that there are five types of coins and we have to make the target 11 and uh, we have to use exactly three coins. So k is equal to 3. Right. So one way of doing this is taking 1 and 10 and the total sum will be 11 but you see that uh, in this case the number of coins chosen will be equal to 2. So this is not a way that we are going to consider. Right. I am just telling you that this way would not be valid. So another way would be to take 1, 5 and 5. Since we have taken 3 coins and the total sum is 11, then we can consider it to be a valid way, right. And we have to tell it whether one such way exists to form the total value target using only k coins, exactly k coins, right. We have to tell this. Now uh, like some of you might be able to solve this problem with recursive dp easily but might face some problems with iterative dp. So first of all, uh, we will have uh, some things like n, target and k. Right. These are the three things that we have to consider. Our answer depends on n, our answer depends on target and our answer depends on k. Right. So the first and the most important step in DP is to think about the states. Right. So like a very general way of doing this is you have to think on which of the key points our answer or at any point depends. Right. So our answer will definitely depend on n. We will have to traverse the array of n coins. Right. This is the very important thing. Our answer will also depend on k because uh, we need exactly k coins, right. We need to use exactly k coins. So the number of coins I have used till now will also be very important and our answer will also depend on target, right. Because like this part is also, this part is also included in many other problems which is standard coin, coin choosing problem and this part is something that they have added in this particular problem, right. So once we have identified that our dp states will be like this dp of n target and k right. So n will be the position in the coins array, target will be the number of coins or the, or the total value that I want to form and k will be the number of coins that I have currently right. So these are the three things that our dp states will depend on. So since it is a three dimensional dp, I will tell you a way how we can solve this with iterative dp. So the very first step whenever you see a dp, now, now that you have identified the states, you see that there are three states, right. So the first thing that you will do is make three for loops. So this is the first for loop, this is the second for loop, this is the third for loop. So for now we don't have to worry about what goes inside the for loop, we just have to make three for loops, right. Once you have made three for loops, you put your entire logic of you put your entire logic of the recursive dp inside here, right. So for this particular problem, we will see how our dp states depend on each other. So let us say, let me just write it recursive, recursive dp logic and let me also explain you how these states will depend on each other. So for example, I have taken two ways x and y. So one way one way of if I am at any particular point, so if this is an array of points, let us say I am at this particular point, one way is to choose this particular coin and the other way would obviously be, obviously be to not choose this particular coin, right. So let us say first of all I am talking about the first way where I am not choosing this particular coin. 
So my DP states will definitely depend on the remaining coins. So I'll move to n minus one. Right. So let's say this is i. My target will still remain the same, and my number of coins used will still remain the same. Right. So this should be this should be i minus one. Why? Because I have I have considered this particular coin. I'm not I'm I'm willing not to choose it. So I'll move to the next coin at i minus one at position. My target will remain the same because I have not taken any more coins, and my number of coins remaining will also remain same because I have not taken any more coins. Right. So this is how our uh, like this is the first thing that we are going to consider that we don't choose the particular coin. Now, now there is a way when we choose the current coin. So DP of i will remain as it is. Why? Because if I am choosing the current coin, I might also decide in the next move to choose the same coin again. Right. If I choose the current coin, I will not move to the next position because again I might try to choose the same coin. So my position will remain the same. My target will be subtracted by coins of i, and my number of coins will reduce by one. Right. So this is the second uh, way I can choose. Again, if I am choosing this particular way, I have to make sure that j is greater than equal to coins of i. And k is greater than zero, right? I can only make this operation if this this particular condition is satisfied, right? So this would this is this is uh, what you would do in the recursive part also, right? This is how our DP states would depend. In the recursive function, the only uh, the only difference was instead of writing DP, you would have called your helper function or whatever you name it. You would have called your helper function and i minus one k and j and k, right? This is what we generally do in recursive DP. But in iterative DP, our states will directly depend on that other DP array. Where this is the first way that we can do is what we'll do: we'll decide not to choose the current coin. So we move on to the previous coin. The target remains the same. The number of coins remains same. The second way is that we that we decide to choose the current coin. And since I can now in the next move, I can again decide to choose the current coin. I'll not update the value of i. The total value will decrease decrement by coins of i, and the total number of coins will decrement by one. Right, and I can only make this move if the number of coins, if the value of j is greater than equals to the value of the current coin, and if the number of coins are greater than zero. Right, so this is something what we have. Now, uh, what you can do is you can set DP of i j, i j and k is equal to x plus y. So x will return certain number of ways, y will return certain number of ways. If you want to calculate the total number of ways, you can do x plus y, or you, if you just want to know whether it is possible or not, you can do x or y. Right. So this is you, something you can do. So even if you do x plus y, it doesn't matter. It will still uh, for this particular problem, it will still give the correct answer. So we have discussed this part till now. Now we will have to observe what do we do with these for three for loops, right? Initially, what we did was we observed that we have three DP states. So we made three for loops. We just made our entire recursive DP logic here. So it is the same logic that we use in recursive DP. That is, that is why I have written recursive DP logic, right? So you, you you implement the same logic inside these three for loops. And since you have formed your final answer, now we'll have to think of the for loops. So you see that the answer for the current state i is depending on the state i minus one. Right. This is what you have. This is something you have to do after writing this particular logic. So you will from from this particular logic, you can easily observe that the answer for the state i is depending on the state i minus one. Right. This means that i minus one will have to be computed before you come try to compute i. So this for loop will be a forward for loop starting from zero till less than equals to n. Right. This is how you will have to think in this in these kind of problems. Similarly, if 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 the case was something different, if the uh, answer for DP of i was depending on some function of i plus one, then you would have then you would need to make a reverse for loop where you start i from n, you go till i greater than zero, and you do i minus nine, right? So in that particular case, you will have to do this. Why? Because you will have to compute i plus one before you try to compute i. Otherwise, you will get some garbage values. Right, so this is the only thing that you need to take care of while implementing iterative DP. That all the states, 
all the states that your current answer is depending on must be computed before you try to compute your current answer right so similarly let us write the loops for other j and k as well so the answer for j is depending on some other value less than j right so it is j minus coins of i right so the answer for j is depending on some other value less than j so definitely i'll have to compute starting from 0 till less than the maximum value of j is target right right so this is how you have to think again the answer for the state k is depending upon k minus 1 so we'll have to compute k minus 1 before k that is why here also i put a uh, like forward for right so this is the only thing that you'll have to do now at the end now at the end if you have if you have done x plus y your dp of dp of n target and k will contain the total number of ways so number of ways this problem can be solved right or the number of ways the coins can be chosen if you have done x plus y so if if it is greater than 0 the answer will be 1 if it is equal to 0 the answer will be false if you have done x or y then it will only contain 0 and 1 whether it is possible or not right so bo both of them are correct you can directly return in c plus plus you can directly return this value because if it is greater than 0 then it will return, return true otherwise it will return false right so let me just show you the code for this particular problem now so in this particular problem i have created a global dp array why because the total size of this array will be equal to 10 to the power 7 and uh, there is a uh, little constraint on how on the size of the array you can create inside functions in c plus plus it is uh, about like 10 to the power 6 or 10 to the power 5 so this array was exceeding that limit so i i had to declare it globally right so this is the first thing that you need to do you whenever you know that your size of the array will be very large uh, around 10 to the power 7 you declare it globally right otherwise it will give segmentation for so now what you do is uh, as i've explained i'll run three for loops starting from 0 to less than n plus 1 so it is less than equals to n basically and this is from 0 to less than target plus 1 it is from 0 to k plus 1 right so this is the three for loops that i'll be using now for the base case if i is equals to equals to 0 so like i forgot to discuss this particular case let me just discuss it quickly so uh, for example these were the coins right so this is coin 1 coin 2 coin 3 coin 4 coin 5 and now you are at position 0 right so that means you have tried to discover all the ways using all the coins right so you have tried it now your answer will be true your answer will be true or you would only find a valid way when your target is equal to 0 and the value of k is also equal to 0. Why? Now since you are at position 0, you know that you have considered all the coins. Right? You have considered all the coins. Now you have to find whether your answer is possible or not. Your answer will always only be possible when you have completed your target. That means you have the value of target is equal to 0. And the value of k should also be equal to 0 because you are allowed to use exactly k coins. Right. So, since you are allowed to use exactly k coins, the value of k should also be equal to 0. So, only when the value of both of these is equal to 0, then only your answer will be possible and your dp of i, dp of this particular value, 0, 0 and 0 will be equal to 1. In all the other cases, dp of 0 let's say there is some value x and there is some value y this will be equal to 0 right why because there is some value in there right whenever x and y both are 0 then only your answer will be 1 otherwise your answer will be 0 so this is what i have done for when i is equal to 0 i have said the base case dp of i j k is equal to j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 so you see there is a logical element in between only when both of them is 0 the dp of ijk will be 1 otherwise it will be 0 right so i just continue it from here so that i don't execute this part for i is equal to 0 for every i other than 0 what i'll do is i'll create two variables x and y initialize both of them with 0 so x will be this will be the case when i don't choose the current element right so i just transition to i minus 1 state the num the target and the number of coins will still remain the same right and for the second way when i choose the current coin I need to make sure that j is greater than or equals to coins of i minus 1, right? Why i minus 1? I am taking i minus 1 here because the array coins array is in zero based indexing, right? So that is why I have taken i minus 1 here and my i and my i value is in one based indexing, 
So uh, I just make sure that it is greater than equals to coins of i minus one and k. K means that k is greater than zero, right? So my y, this is the second way in which I consider the current coin. So I will still remain the same. J will get decremented by coins of i minus one and k will decrement by one, right? So this is the next DP state. Now my DP of i j k will depend on x plus y. Right? So you can also take it x or y here, but uh, x or y will compute if it is possible or not. X plus y will compute the total number of phase. So it is essentially the same thing. Now at the end, I can just directly run DP of n target and k. If you are using any other language other than C plus plus, then you will have to check. And if you are using X plus Y, then you will have to check whether it is greater than greater than zero. Then only you have to return true. Otherwise, you have to return false. In C plus plus, if it is greater than zero, it will auto automatically return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Right. So this is the solution of today's problem of the day. Another coin change problem. So this was just a slight variation of the standard DP problem. I used this problem uh, to explain you uh, like uh, uh, like how you can think of iterative DP. And uh, I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And uh, I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you are one of them, consider subscribing to this channel. It's always free of course, and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't find the videos interesting. So share this channel with your friends until the next video drops. Keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.